Dr. Wilbur asked us to touch upon the three topics, medicine, healing, and uh, chasidut, which is our basic Indian, and, uh, and Eretz Yisrael, how it all goes together. The language that we speak is Hasidut, so it's all, it's, it's all about Hasidut. But uh, it's a language that, uh, that lends itself to, to any topic and uh, enlightens any topic. So when you think about a specific topic, the first thing is to try to identify the, uh, the topic with some attribute of the soul some emotion, some intellectual faculty. So since we have these three topics now on hand, in short, medicine or the, the, the profession of healing, and uh, involvement in the, in the inner dimension of the Torah, which is called Hasidut, Kabbalah and Hasidut, and being connected to our land, our homeland of Israel, Eretz Israel. So each one must arouse or re reflect in the soul some basic uh, emotion or some basic uh, attribute. And the way, uh, so this is a good way to begin. Why, why are you motivated? Why is a person motivated to, uh, to study medicine or to become a doctor? Which one of the spherot is behind that motivation? Spherot are the, the channels of divine influx of uh, energy and light by which Hashem creates the world. Ten spherot. Imagine that everybody has heard. So to explain that the medicine comes from the, the spherot, which is called Tiferet which literally means beauty, but its inner attribute and its, uh, its emotion is rachamim, which is mercy, compassion. Meaning that, uh, that when I was a kid, I also wanted to be a doctor. It didn't happen. Why did I want to be a doctor? Because I, read, I saw people with kid, other kids that uh, were uh, were sometimes sick. I wanted to help, to help, to, to heal. Where does that come from? Where does that desire come from in the soul? It comes from uh, what's called mercy. Rachamim, Rachmanas. Which once more is the, it's the inner quality of the Svira, which is called Tiferet, beauty, because the whole body and the soul within the body is an expression of divine beauty, just like the man was created in the image of God. But the inner emotion is mercy. Let's go to Hasidut. There's another emotion which is very close to mercy, but it's something, it's something by itself. Hasidut comes from the word chesed, which means loving kindness, and the, the emotion behind it is chesed, which, whose inner emotion is love. So it says that love and, and mercy are very close, but it's not the same thing. Love, I love God. I love Israel. I love the Torah. I love the land of Israel. Whatever you love is, has to, is chasidut. Even in Yiddishkeit, everybody here is connected to Yiddishkeit, coming from a, from a, from a background. So Yiddishkeit can either be approached basically through fear or through love. Hasidus is a place that is take, taking Yiddishkeit, taking the whole Torah, all of the mitzvot, and uh, from, the, from the foundation of love. Once more, I love God, I love Israel, I love the Torah, I love the land of Israel. 
So that's love. Mercy once more says, I see somebody sick, I want to heal him, I want to help him. I have Rahmanas on him. What about Eretz Yisrael itself? And it's all now related. We have the Surah of Chesed, which is love, and Tiferet, which is mercy. And now we're talking about people that, Jewish people that are very consciously connected to our land. Where does that come from? Why isn't everybody uh, involved with uh, the whole Jewish people should be involved with uh, with settling and uh, and building the land of Israel and building a also a government in the land of Israel which uh, which governs according to the to Judaism to, to Yiddishkeit. So that's coming from the sphere of Malchut of kingdom in Kabbalah. You can picture the, what's called the Eitzachayim, the tree of life, of all the Sirot. So we have here, even in the uh, reflected in the body, the uh, Chesed is the right or the right hand, Tiferet is the heart, the, the mercy, the compassion. Machut is the is, is, in Patach that we say before Shabbat is the mouth, but it's it's also the feminine. In general, the feminine aspect of the soul, or dimension of the soul, its inner experience is lowliness in the face of God. What does that mean? The, each one of the Sirot also has an archetypal soul. The archetypal soul of Chesed, of love, is Abraham, Abraham Avinu. The archetypal soul of, of uh, healing, we said his mercy, is Yaakov Avinu. So if you want to be a doctor, you, you're identifying yourself with Yaakov Avinu. Each, each one also has, a, has an archetypal uh, angelic figure to it. Like love is Michael, Michael. Healing, obviously, is Raphael. Malach of Tiferet. The archetypal soul of Malchut of the land of Israel is King David, David Amadach. That he never wanted to be out of Israel. Yitzchak Avim was forbidden to, to leave Israel of the, of the fathers. But David Amadach was the one that most felt that he could only existentially be be a Jew, be himself in Israel, not any place else. How does he express his feeling towards Hashem? The verse reads, Vahiti Shafal I am I'm lowly in my own eyes. And the, all of my power, all of my success in life comes from above. And I'm nothing, I'm wor- also garnet in Yiddish garnet vert. In English it sounds not so good, I'm worthless. I mean, I have no worth or deserve, I deserve nothing in myself. But I'm happy. I'm very, David, King David was a very happy figure. I'm very, very happy, but it's nothing from me. That is, that emotion is called the emotion of Malchut. The word is Shiflut. Lowliness in the face of God. But it, 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 that's Shiflut brings with it happiness, if it's true she flew, and also power, power to, to rule. This is the midah, the quality and the attribute of the land of Israel, the she floods of David Amalek. So actually these three topics now, just to summarize the first uh, idea, is that medicine and healing is mercy. That's maybe a little uh, an anecdote, a little story. In uh, in Europe, so every little uh, shteto of uh, of Eden or Chassidim had a had a local uh, doctor. The local doctor was not always the greatest professional uh, doctor in the world. But he was, he was a, especially if he was a chassid, he had a, 
was a particular doctor in Lubavitch that had a, a long beard, a Hasidic Shayid, was devoted to the patients, whoever called him, but he didn't know he wasn't such a great uh, knowledgeable physician. So uh, once when he came to the Rebbe, there's the Rebbe Maharaj, four generations ago, had a yechidus, a session with the, with the Rebbe. And the Rebbe asked him, when you, when you uh, see a patient, <coughs> try to describe me exactly what you do when the patient comes. So he said, the patient comes, he sits down, and he tells me his, uh, his problem. And I usually, it's my first, first thought, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help him. But once I have Rachmanus on, on the person, so I, and he has a long beard. <laughs> so I take my hand and I go like this a few times with my beard. And then an idea enters my mind. What can be, what can help this, uh, this yid? And I tell him. So the, the Rebbe smiled and he said, that's, uh, if, if that's what you do, then it's okay. You're a good doctor and you'll, you'll help people. Why? Because when you do, when you uh, do this with your hand on your beard, you're, you are arousing the 13 principles of mercy, which are called the Yudhimatikunei Digna, the different, the, there's an, uh, an idiom or a metaphor in the Zohar, HaKadosh. The, 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 the divine beard, as it were, has 13 parts to it, and each one is a different attribute of Hashem's mercy on us. So you arouse Hashem's mercy through, through having mercy yourself and doing this with your beard, and what comes to your mind comes from above, and you're okay. So that's that's uh, mercy and uh, healing. As we said before, Hasidus is love, is, is loving every Jew as yourself, and sometimes more than yourself. It says in the Gemara that a Hasid does something in order not to allow that perhaps some harm will come to someone else, even though some harm will come to himself. Because he cares for the out of love, he cares for his friend, and everyone is his friend. He cares for the other more than he cares for himself. That's the definition of a chosid in the in the Gemara. So that's that's just unadulterated and unlimited love for for the other. Obviously, it all begins with love of the the Creator, for all creations of one Creator who's good to us, he loves us, we love him. Kamayim apanim apanim. What's more, Eretz Yisrael, to, to really, our purpose in Eretz Yisrael, we, we have to, once we have to settle the land and build the land and support what happens here. But the ultimate purpose is to create a, uh, it's, it's, it's to extend and to, uh, to manifest which means to correct the whole social and political scene here in Israel, which needs correction and rectification. And that's uh, definitely a, an objective of anyone who's going to settle, come here and settle the, the land of Israel. And most of that depends upon this quality of Shiflut. So this was all just one uh, thought at the beginning because uh, where these three tapas come from. I don't know if you've ever studied the, the history of medicine. Do you have a course? Medieval medicine. There's a lot that can be 
learn from from history. Do you know what what the, the term the four humors means? The four humors, like the Rambam, <laughs> the Rambam, right? The Rambam, all of the media, right? A healthy body and soul, according to the way that people understood the body and the soul to operate together, was when there was, when what there is proper balance between the four humors. What are the what are the four humors? The word humor is very close to the Hebrew word for it, which is mara. The form marot, it's called. And they each different pronounce a different color. If the person has a blend of four different colors in his body and in his soul, and if the balance is good, then he is healthy, 100% healthy. If not, he has to be healed. The white humor is in the lungs and it uh, corresponds to the these four humors correspond also to the four elements of the ancients a person who is a white humor uh, type so he is uh, usually very uh, happy and light Not a serious person, but uh, can be a very uh, smart person, light of spirit. The opposite of the white humor is the black humor that everybody knows. Marash <laughs> Khura. It's in the spleen. Each one has a seat. What is the humor nowadays? In um, like the modern physiolo physiology, physiology, that's what you call a humor. So what physiological system do these humors uh, belong to? A humor. These humors are hormones. It's also the same word. What is the say the hormone system? It's called the endocrine system. The endocrine system is was one of this the, I mentioned the book before, one of the basic topics in the book that we have, which I hope that everybody will see, is how the different physiological systems of the body also correspond to the spirit, the then spirit. We'll speak uh, say a little bit more about it. But uh, The sphere of Netzach, which has to do with, uh, with preserving good health, is the endocrine system. The endocrine system is the partner of the immune system. The two spheroth that correspond to the endocrine and to the immune system are called Netzach and Hod. In the body, according to Kabbalah, they correspond actually to the two kidneys, the right and the left kidney. But it's all physical systems, all, all the body, the many hormones coming from different uh, places in the body. Hormone is also f for growth, for physical growth, for spiritual growth. In any event, these, all of these health, according to the ancients, is the balance of these four hormones, we'll call them. These four humors. And the fact that one is in the lung, and one is in the spleen, and one is in the liver, and one is in the gallbladder, so that's just a, a generalization. Where they, it's all over. Just that it's a idealization that they, we place the right, the the uh, the white uh, mara humor in the lungs, and the and the and the black humor, which is depression. The opposite, 
about a person which is the opposite, of the, never depressed, that's the white human. A person which is, always, who is low and depressed, that's the black human. Atzfut, Atzfut and Atzlut, as it says in, in the beginning of Tanya. If you've seen that, the four, how the four, the four elements correspond. He doesn't call them humors, as he calls them the elements. Then there's the, the green, the Marayuruka, which is in the gallbladder, that's the gall itself. Sometimes the humor is just called gall. So in the gallbladder itself, this causes the, the green humor, and that uh, motivates uh, passions, all kinds of passions. And then the red humor, the fourth one is in the liver, which is the seat of the blood, and uh, that motivates uh, anger and other uh, related emotions. So once more, if, there are, if one is too much, then a the person is not balanced, he's not, uh, he's not well. The, let's see the, the image just brought the book. We have three, three of them. The most yes, 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 about humors and to understand that it has to do with hormones and the endocrine system of the body and that it, 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 it relates both to physical phenomena as well as to psychological phenomena. And that, a, a, that the, the, uh, the objective of a, of a good physician is to, is, is to seek balance and is to see the, I mean, now it's more and more known that if it's a good physician has to take into account both psychological as well as physiological uh, th uh, things. So uh, this topic is a very interesting topic that even though it, is, it seems like outdated or uh, not relevant, it's, I think, believe it's very relevant. Like an example, the, the four humors. But the last thing I wanted to say is just about the beginning, very, I've worked on the beginning, very beginning of the Torah. The Torah begins with two words, Breshit Bara, in the beginning Hashem created. The word Bara in Hebrew means to create, and create, the Ramban, Ramban says that the only word in Hebrew which, which implies ex nihilo, was created, creating something from nothing, is this verb bara, something from nothing. But most interestingly, the verb bara also means bryuth, which is health, good health. So that's why there's a word that people, the darshan, brishit bara, in the beginning of bara, the first thing is be healthy. But the word brishit itself, what's the root of that word? The root of brishit in the beginning is comes from the root rosh head. So actually the first two words of the Torah, which are Breshit Bara, is not just f first of all be healthy, but it's a gesunde kop, you know, Yiddish a little bit. You have to have a healthy, a healthy means a straight, a straight head. A yeshiva bochah, tamei chacham, are a girl that learns Torah. The first thing is to think straight, to have a healthy perspective. That's the very beginning of the Torah. Why does, why does health and uh, creation ex nihilo? Where, where is that expressed in the, say if you're learning to be like, well, what, what physiological, thing, like, 
much more. He said, you have an endocrine system in Netzach. I can't explain the whole, everything. We have an uh, immune system in Hod. Is there some system in the body, some physiological system that there is, as it were, ex nihilo creation, which we can say is the beginning, the head of, uh, of healing? So it's like a... What in the body creates? Creates something anew? Reproductive system? Huh? Reproductive system? Reproduction is in the creating from generation to generation, but constantly. Bone marrow. Oh, the bone marrow. The bone marrow is a system in its own right. And if you see this book, the two basic intellectual faculties of the mind are called wisdom and understanding. And wisdom corresponds to the bone marrow, which in Hebrew is called meach ha'etz, and moach ha'etz, and the bone marrow is the brain, the brain of the, of the bone. And it is continuously creating, well, what, kind of, what are the cells called? It's called stem cells. That, that from the stem cells come undifferentiated blood cells. And then the blood cells, the undifferentiated blood cells, differentiate into the red and the, and the white. It's all, it's all coming from the, uh, it's all come from the blood marrow, from the bone marrow. The bone marrow is, is wisdom. Wisdom creates ex nihilo in the body. The blood cells, both the red and the white, are the system of Bina. Wisdom and understanding God, father and mother. As father, the bone marrow is continuously creating the cells, the red cells of mother. In the Gemara it says that the bones and the bone marrow comes from the father and the blood comes from the mother. So, our sages taught, taught us this thousands of years ago. So as physiological symptoms, we have to know how to uh, abstract. To abstract, the, the bone marrow is the root, it's called Rosh, the head, or the, the, the healthy head which is continuously creating ex nihilo life force. Life force is the blood. It's the white that's creating the red. It's another idiom, and it has to do with colors and color theory. One last point. We, everybody knows that maybe the, the deepest f philosophical uh, paradox or dilemma is between divine knowledge of all, God knows all, and bechirach of shit and free choice. Do I really have free choice? Is it an illusion? Is it a reality? All of the great philosophers, the Jewish philosophers, non-Jewish philosophers, everybody, it's the greatest paradox, they're different. The two basic opinions are either that everything is deterministic, which is if everything is deterministic, then there's no free choice, or no, that there is free choice. But at the same time, Hashem knows, and it doesn't... Uh, in some mysterious way, that's why it's a paradox. We can't understand why the Rambam says, but they don't. It doesn't contradict. It doesn't totally contradict one another. Again, to go into all the philosophy we can't now do, but there's a very beautiful thing in, in modern medicine that I thought would would interest and to to end, which is how this the stem cells actually create the blood cells. There are two theories. One is called determinism, 
and the other is called random. What does it mean? One where I have an yet undifferentiated blood cell, the path to from that state that is yet undifferentiated to become a, either a red cell or a white cell, or there's a third type also. Many scientists say that it's deterministic, that it depends on different factors of an environment, and it's 100% determined how this cell is going to develop and to become a become a particular blood cell. There are those that are the samachlekes. Right? In, in, in science, there are also also controversies. So another opinion says no, that it's random. It's impossible to know, even if I had all the pre-information, it's impossible to know how one stem cell, which type of a blood cell is going to be created from that stem cell. There's no way to know. It has to do also with, uh, even in quantum mechanics and physics, Einstein still believed in determinism. He wasn't willing. God doesn't play dice. That was his machokas with uh, with many other great uh, physicists. So it's still it's still an open machokas. And in medicine, that machokas, which is actually the machokas of knowledge versus choice is the creation of, uh, the continual creation of, of tremendous uh, astronomic numbers of uh, blood cells every, every day of your life. Or the, the person has to know that my body is alive, my organism is alive and functioning because I reflect godliness. And there's a, a creation ex nihilo going on continuously in myself, which must find this road from wisdom to understanding, from father to mother within myself. Right, so as we said before, whatever Hasidus is trying to touch everything from a from a spiritual perspective to understand the basic model. Now we've heard many times is the model of the what's called the tree of life, which is the Sirot. So we should all be loving and merciful and happy and lowly and merit to be good doctors, to help people and to be uh, to be loving souls. Everyone should have a build a loving home and uh, and to settle and to develop our land of Israel and thereby to bring uh, Gula Shlima to the world.